Rub up your engines! All right, my son's been bad. One of these days, he's gonna get disowned. He's got this beautiful 2017 Tacoma, and he didn't change the oil often enough. So I'm gonna show you how to change it and give you some tips. Now, if you only do one thing to maintain your vehicle, make sure you change the oil. Oil not only lubricates the engine, it helps cool it. Oil is cheap, engine costs a fortune. You let the oil get dirty, the engine will wear out, the metal parts, the rubber seals, will get dirty, will get dirty oil in them. It has, of course, abrasive and it can make the seals leak. All kinds of problems just because you're too lazy to change your oil. So change it and use common sense. Now oil breaks down over time. So you change it once a year. If you drive less than say 5,000 miles a year, change your oil once a year. That's real simple. There's one real exclusion to this rule. Highway mileage strictly going 65, 70 miles an hour is equivalent to 10% of civvy driving. So check this out. My matrix here, did most of the traveling going from Tennessee to Rhode Island and back. So even though I put about 3,000 on it so far, it's still crystal clean and all the way to the full line. So if you do take a long trip, that's equivalent to maybe 500 miles driving. You could change it later then, but stop and go city driving, that really wears your oil out. And my son with his Tacoma, he's been bad cause they use their Sienna for trips. This is just run around, going to the dump, moving to houses, fixing stuff up. It's mainly stop and go driving. So he should have changed it. He's gone about 10,000 miles. But then again, it's a Toyota. It hasn't done any damage. It's a little bit dirty, but it's nothing outrageous. You don't want to do this with Chrysler engines or GM engines. They will wear them out a lot faster. It's kind of a hilarious story. I had a customer with the Chrysler, his wife's car, and she didn't maintain it at all. She drove it 20,000 miles without changing the oil. The engine blew up. But I had a customer with a Toyota. He had 80,000 miles and he'd never changed the oil. And I said, why didn't you change the oil? He said, well, I'm a salesman. I sell shoes. I'm all over the southwestern United States. I'd have to change the oil every week, week and a half. That did turn it to an oil burner the next year. It started to burn quite a bit of oil. But the engine was still running after 80,000 miles without an oil change. But don't push it. Look, oil's cheap. Engines cost a lot. No, you don't need that many tools to change oil. You need a little wrench like this that fits your oil filter. They're spring loaded. You can see this fits good. And then just the ratchet with an extension that goes in there so you can reach where it is. And to remove the drain bolt, you just need a socket. And I like these long extension bars because then you don't have to hammer, you can pull it then. Doesn't matter how tight it is, this will pull it off. And of course the pan to put the oil in. Now this is a Toyota truck. It's pretty high up in the air. It doesn't really need to be jacked up but I'm filming and since I'm filming I need it higher so I can get the camera under there if you're not filming it you don't have to jack it up in the air normally for safety I'd put a jack stand but this thing's so high even if it fell down it's not gonna hit me because the truck's high up in the air but if you want to be an absolute fanatic you can stick a jack stand under there no this is a Toyota there's the drain plug most of these are 14 millimeter and as you can see so is this one with the long bar it's so easy to get them loose. You don't have to pull and swear and slam. I like wearing gloves because dirty oil is not good for your skin. And we'll let it drain. And here's a tip. I do my own oil changes. So I buy a bag of the gaskets for the oil drain plug. So I have new ones lying around. You buy them by the bag. You got them. You know it's the right size. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to go look for one where you got the oil out of your car. Buy them ahead of time. Same thing with the filters and the oil. I buy all my stuff on Amazon. It's cheaper that way. And in this case, the old gasket stuck on the engine. So you want to knock that off. Really stuck on there. But I was able to flip it off with a knife. So now we can put the new gasket on which of course goes on the plug not on the engine it just got stuck and it's good that there's still some oil dripping a little because that'll help lubricate it so it'll be easier to take apart then we get our long bar and we want it nice and snug then you just get it tight snug and then push it a little bit more if you're fanatic you can get on a torque wrench to the torque wrench reading but i've done this way for 43 years and i never had one come off or leak as long as you get it tight and then push it a little bit more the washer is called the crush washer it crushes in and holds now next comes the oil filter which you can see up there that blue thing that's the oil filter you get our oil filter wrench and the wrench and stick it up there on it goes and you just turn it on to break it loose because it'll be on there pretty tight you can see it's pretty hard to turn then before you spin it off make sure the oil pan is under there so it doesn't drip on everything move it over a little then just spin it the rest of the way you're gonna get oil that's why i wear gloves and here's something you want to watch out for you want to check to make sure this is bare metal 
where the filter screws on. The seal on the oil filter is just pressed in. It's easy to come off. It sticks on your engine, and then you put a new filter on with the gasket, you'll have two gaskets. It's called double gasketing. Then the oil will leak and you'll blow your engine. So make sure that your new filter is lubricated and that your old filter, this dirty one, still has the rubber gasket on it. In this case, it's still here because it's not stuck on the engine. But check that. Then you just go back up to the top and spin it on by hand, which is another reason you want it lubricated. Because if it's not lubricated, you'll have a hard time getting it tightened correctly. There are always in odd places where it's not that easy to access them. You want it as tight as you can get it by hand, then get a clean paper towel because they get slippery and put the towel on and then get it as tight as you can. That's good. Then while we're here, we don't want to make a mess, so let's clean all the crap that drip all over the place here on the cross member. Everywhere. We want to have it clean. Then what do you got to do? You got to put oil in. What kind of oil? Well, it says right here on the engine. Zero W20. So we got some good full synthetic oil. Now realize you're getting a zero W20 oil. It has to be synthetic oil. That's the only way they can make a zero W oil. And then of course, how much oil do you put in? Well, you can measure it. Measure it comes out, but that's a mess. I just look it up. I looked it up my data system. You can watch YouTube videos. This one is six. 0.25 quarts of oil. This is five, so we'll put the whole thing in. They really seal them. They go a bit overboard. The metal out of the wire, it'll glug, 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 and we'll pour all this in with a funnel. It don't make them like they used to. You might have to hold it like I am. Well, this one's empty, so now we'll get a quart from the other one, do a quart and a little bit more, then start it, and then check it with a dipstick and adjust it as necessary. Okay, we guessed by the lines. Let's start it up, and then we can get it perfect. You want to start it, then stop it, let it sit on a level surface for four or five minutes. Then you pull out the dipstick and wipe it off. It's got to be clean. Stick it back in, and then pull it out and check it. It's right on the line. That's perfect. Then we get the cap and screw it on. Make sure you don't cross it. Turn it backwards till it goes in place. Then, good turn. Now it's on nice and solid. Well, you can see it's easy to do yourself. Then you know. You have quality oil, quality filter. You go to an oil change place, hey, they're going to sell you the cheapest oil there for their discount. And if you want good oil like this Mobile One, they're going to charge up the wazoo so buy it yourself online like i do buy your little oil drain gaskets online buy a package of them at a time then you're all ready you save money it's done right and you have the satisfaction of knowing your vehicle is going to last as long as possible without having to trust people that maybe they're minimum wage workers at a discount oil change joint you really want to trust those people with your 30 40 50 60 thousand dollar car i certainly wouldn't and you shouldn't either and here's some bonus questions and answers. Antman73 says, I got a Cadillac that burns oil. 06 Cadillac V6. Bought it eight months ago. It burns oil. I changed the PC valve. It made no difference. No codes came up. Well, the problem is you bought a V6 Cadillac. Those are terrible engines. They fall apart as they age. It's an 06. It doesn't matter. It's only got 68,000 miles. Your engine is wearing out. Either the piston rings or the valve seals are going. And either way, it costs a fortune to repair those things. It's burning oil. The PCV valve, if it was bad, you could suck in raw oil. You changed it. It didn't get any better. It might even be a little worse after you changed it. You got a problem with the engine flat wearing out. They're poor engines. They often do that. If I were you, I'd get rid of the car as fast as possible because eventually you're going to have serious problems. If you're burning that kind of oil, it's going to ruin the catalytic converter, the oxygen sensors, and it's going to be an endless money pit that gets deeper and deeper. So my advice is get rid of the thing as soon as possible. And don't ever buy another Cadillac. They're not well-made. Cadillac's well-made in my grandfather's day. Not anymore. Not anymore. They're terrible cars. Every single customer I ever had that bought a modern Cadillac, including rich lawyers, said it was one of the worst cars they ever had, and they never bought another one. Well, if you've seen that YouTube video where a guy is using dry ice and compressed air to clean a dirty engine block, it's pretty cool. You get all that steam coming out, and it really cleans them well. But let me give you a, a disclaimer on that. Don't do it in your car when it's in your engine bay inside the car under the hood because dry ice is really cold and that would fry the electronics make the wiring brittle realize the guy who was doing that was doing an engine that was pulled out it didn't have the electronics it was just a bare motor now you can clean a bare motor any way you want you don't care the electronics are on it but don't ever think about trying using any kind of dry ice cleaner to clean your engine in your car even using water and spray cleaner's bad because the water can ruin the electronics. The engines being dirty doesn't mean that much anyways. I always tell people, look, a little bit of oil on your engine actually keeps things from rusting and corroding. If you do clean it 
crystal clean. Say you live near the ocean, that salt water is going to start corroding the metal a lot faster. It's better with a little bit of oil on it. Everybody that knows how to prevent corrosion on metal, you seal it with a little bit of oil stuff on it first, and then that keeps it from rusting. It puts a sealer on it. So it's a cool video watching a guy use dry ice and compressed air to clean his engine. But don't try it when the engine is in your car under the hood. You'll ruin the electronics. So don't try that at home. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.